Hi everyone, today we're going to be working with the floor and ceiling functions and we're going to be trying to bound certain simple expressions in terms of floor and ceiling functions. So I'm not going to state what the theorem is outright. What I'd like to do is have an exploration because that's often how math works. We just kind of see what techniques are available and we try to head in a certain direction and a result comes out of it. And so the exploration is going to be about comparing two kinds of expressions, the floor of x plus y versus the floor of x plus the floor of y. And we're also going to be looking at the ceiling counterpart, which is the ceiling of x plus y versus the ceiling of x plus the ceiling of y. So let's see where we can get with this. The general idea that I'll pursue, and it's a, it's a well-known technique, is that for all real z, it's true that the floor of z is equal to, oops, sorry, not the floor of z, but z itself is equal to the floor of z plus the fractional part of z where the fractional part is greater than or equal to zero but less than one so this is a well-known decomposition and we're going to be using this decomposition the way i'd like to use it is by applying it to x and y so we get the floor of x plus y is equal to the floor of the floor of x plus the fractional part of x plus the floor of y plus the fractional part of y. And what we can do now is we can take the floor of x and the floor of y, which note that they're both integers, and we can take them outside of the sum because they're integers. And so we get the floor of the fractional part of x plus the fractional part of y is equal to the floor of x plus the floor of y. What that tells us is the following. The floor of x plus y minus the floor of x minus the floor of y is equal to the floor of the fractional part of x plus the fractional part of y. So if we're comparing these two expressions, this one and this one, then it suffices to look at bounds for this. So really what we're trying to do is control the fractional part of x plus the fractional part of y. And we can do that using the idea that I wrote up here, which bounds fractional parts. So what we get is that the fractional part of x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 1. And the fractional part of y is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 1. So together, by adding these, we get that the fractional part of x plus the fractional part of y is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 2. Now, we're going to take the, fl the floor of this. So what it will mean is that the, f the floor of the fractional part of x plus the fractional part of y is either equal to 0 or 1. It can't be 2 since the here we have strictly less than 2. So what that means is that this expression is greater than or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 1. But really it, it can be any intermediate value. This is either 0 or 1. So we're going to plug that back in here and what we get are bounds which say that the floor of x plus y minus the floor of x minus the floor of y is less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to 0 
and we can write that in alternative form which says that x plus y floor is less than or equal to floor x plus floor y plus 1 and greater than or equal to floor x plus floor y. So that proves the bounds that we were looking in the floor case. Now let's see if we can translate this to the ceiling case to find an analogous result for ceilings. The idea that we're going to use is an identity that can be proven from first principles. It says that for all in for all z in the reals, it holds that the floor of z is equal to the negative of the ceiling of negative z. I'm not going to prove this because it's fairly well known. It allows us to translate between uh, floors and ceilings but you can prove it from first principles so, so I'll leave it to you. So what we'll do now is apply this in a set of inequalities to negative x and negative y and what that yields is negative x floor plus negative y floor is less than or equal to floor of negative x minus y and that's less than or equal to floor of negative x plus floor of negative y plus 1. Let me rewrite that a little bit because we ran out of space there. We got a plus 1. And then we'll rearrange this inequality and this inequality to, to swap sides and we get that because we want a negative outside the floors, not just inside as well, because we have a double negative, as you can see. There's a negative outside and a negative inside. So what we get is that negative floor of negative x minus y is less than or equal to negative floor of negative x minus floor of negative y and it's greater than or equal to negative floor of negative x minus floor of negative y minus 1. And then we're going to use this identity over here to get the ceiling of x plus y is less than or equal to the ceiling of x plus the ceiling of y and it's greater than or equal to the ceiling of x plus the ceiling of y minus 1. So here we have our counterpart to this formula or I should say it's not so much a formula as inequalities and this is our counterpart for the ceiling function. Okay, so our exploration is now complete. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.